Let's discuss a financial model on a spreadsheet to evaluate a potential investment to install a grid-connected 3KW PV system on a building in Pennsylvania. We'll assume that the building already has a grid connection and that the PV system will work at the same level for 20 years. Columns A and B of the spreadsheet have the month and year of the project, going from the project start all the way up through year 20. Most analyses of PV systems are done on a year-by-year -year basis rather than a month-by-month -month basis, and the differences are usually slight. This month-by-month -month analysis requires 12 times as many lines in the spreadsheet, but it is very easy to copy values and equations to all of them. You might want to do a month-by-month -month analysis if you pay for the system with a loan that requires monthly payments, and if it is important to have positive cash flow every month, or at least every month with good sunlight. A demonstrated positive cash flow may make it easier to obtain the loan, especially for a larger project. Column C has a predicted month-by-month -month output of the system from PV watts, and column D has the cost of the system. It is assumed that the system was paid for and became operational at the end of December, and that there was no significant electricity generation until January. The initial cost in this model is $6 per watt, or a total of $18,000. In practice, you probably do not want to plan to finish a PV installation at the end of December. Bad weather can be a problem at that time of year. If you have delays and you do not finish the installation until the beginning of January, it will be another year before you get the tax credits. But we'll do it this way so we can begin our analysis on January 1. Column E of the spreadsheet has a predicted marginal price of electricity. We'll use a constant 10 cents per kilowatt hour throughout the 20 years that the system is expected to operate. As we've seen, the actual avoided cost for grid electricity may be more complicated. The avoided cost from the owner's electric bill is calculated in column F, based on the expected electricity generation in column C. Column G is other avoided costs. If the system is actually turned on by the end of December, the owner will get a 30% tax credit when he files his income tax return for the following April. This avoided cost is shown in cell G10. If the system is not actually turned on until the new year, the owner will get the tax credit a year later. Column H shows the total avoided cost. It is assumed that the electricity generated in January will reduce the owner's electric bill that is due in February, so these avoided costs show up one month late in column H. In this example, we use a value of 20 cents per kilowatt hour for SREX over the entire 20 years that the system operates, as shown in column I. Column J has the amount of income the owner receives for selling SREX. The contribution of SREC revenue to total income is a month late, under the assumption that it takes that long for the owner to receive the money. It may actually take longer. Column K is for additional revenue. Cell K13 is is the revenue from the PA Sunshine Program grant. The amount is $0.75 cents per watt, or $2,250 total. We assume that the owner will actually receive the money in July. Column L has the total revenue, adding the various types of revenue from SREX and other sources. Column M has the total effective net revenue, calculated as the revenue plus avoided costs minus the actual costs. Column M has a total monthly effective net revenue, calculated as the revenue plus avoided costs minus the actual costs. This value is negative in months when more money is flowing out than coming in. We'll use a constant discount rate of 3% for all revenue and expenses, and then in column N, we calculate the discount factor for every month. Each value is the previous month's value divided by 1 plus the yearly discount rate divided by 12. Column O then shows each month's cash flow times its discount factor. Lastly, column P has a cumulative net present value. When this value is negative, the present value of the total money spent on the project is greater than the present value of the total money received. If you scroll down to row 160, you see that the value in column P becomes positive in October of the 13th year. At this point, you can reasonably say that the system has paid for itself. The model also includes one other expense. The owner received $2,250 from the PA Sunshine Program in the first year. This is taxable income. So in April of the second year, a federal tax payment of 25% of the $2,250 is shown. This amount will vary depending on the owner's tax bracket. Remember that while the spreadsheet is very good at calculating numbers to many digits, 
All of the values are only approximations. The values of electricity and SREX, as well as the appropriate future value of the discount rate, are only estimates. The output of the PV system is also only an estimate and may fluctuate from year to year. Please experiment with this spreadsheet to see the effect of various changes. For example, suppose the avoided cost of electricity is actually 11 cents per kilowatt hour. Or suppose it starts at 10 cents and then goes up higher to higher values in later years. The price of SREX may also start higher, and in the future it may go higher or lower. There are many other factors you may want to change or add. Consider what happens if you increase the yearly discount rate from 3% to 4% or decrease it to 2%. You may also want to add in repair, replacement, and maintenance costs. Look at the effect if the system needs a new inverter in years 7 and 14 and the new inverter costs $3,000. The owner may also want to have the system inspected every year. A good time to have the system inspected is February or March so that it will be working well for the good generation months in the spring and summer. Look at what happens if you add a cost of $200 for an inspection in either February or March of every year. The model does not include long-term degradation of the system. You may want to examine the effect on the payback time if the electricity becomes a little less every year due to aging of the modules. You may also want to consider opportunity costs. Suppose the owner had not purchased the PV system and instead had invested the money at 4% interest. The money he would have earned is actually a cost of the system. The easiest way to do this is as a separate analysis of a different alternative use of the money. If instead you want to include the lost interest revenue as an expense of the PV system, you need to be careful. Remember that if the owner deposits the $18,000 in some interest-paying investment for 20 years, at the end he will get back the $18,000, but its present value will be much less.